Hey, and welcome back to a new video. Today, we will talk about Webflow multi-language and specifically about comparing Weglot versus the Webflow native features. And I am creating this video because after my last one on Webflow localization, I got so many messages of people that were asking, hey, I've been using Weglot before, should I change? Uh, but also people that were setting up their website from scratch and they were asking, hey, which one is better? So uh, I thought I'd create this little video and what you can expect in the video is A, we will talk about the basics of localization. Second up, we will talk about what is Weglot. Then we will compare both solutions and I will also show you in a very, very short setup how to actually uh, implement Weglot on your own website. So let's get started. There are two main reasons why we would be thinking about localization in the first place. First of all, we want to localize a website for your audience. So basically make your website understandable for anyone that's coming to your website and yeah, basically serving the content in the best possible way. If I'm a German, I can way better understand a website in German than for example, in English. And second up, we want to do it also for Google and other search engines because Google wants to serve their users the best content. So whenever there's a localized version probably of a website, um, they would serve it and also it yeah, extends our whole reach if we can talk to more people online. For example, I'm speaking English and German, but if someone only speaks German, then obviously um, they can only see a website in Google if it's also in German. So basically what we want to do here is we want to have happier users and we want to have more traffic and especially the more traffic part is something that you can significantly achieve with localizing your website. So what are the main things that we can localize? First of all, we can localize URLs. So for example, if, you're, if you have a URL right now, like yoururl.com slash about us, you can then also change the URL to yoururl.com slash de for German, for example, and then uh, über uns, so the German version of about us. And it really, really helps to understand also the search engines, the website a little bit better. Second up, we can localize content. So we can localize the text on your website, but we can also localize images. So for example, uh, you can show a German flag on the German website. You can show an English flag on the English web flag, uh, website. And then last but not least, we can also localize meta information. So title tags, descriptions, alt tags, everything that comes up to your mind. And basically in an optimal, optimal or ideal word, it would look something like this. So a user comes to your website and based on where they are from and also the languages they speak, they would be redirected to the right areas of your website. So for example, in German, they would be served the German version of the website. And as you can see here on the right, if they are coming to the German version, the content can be different from the one on the English website. Same for Spanish, same for the US. Um, yeah, and basically there are two reasons to make this happen in Webflow. First reason, uh, first solution is Weglot. Second solution would be uh, Webflow native localization. So Weglot has been here since 2016. It's basically a software as a service company that helps you to translate and localize your website and it works for different CMS systems. So it integrates with Webflow, but also other CMS systems you can use it for. Um, and it has been around way before the Webflow native localization features. So Webflow native just started, I think earlier this year or last year, um, so quite new. Anyone before was basically using Weglot. Uh, and the special thing about Weglot is it is very easy to use. It has a lot of automation features and it's very, very cost effective, especially for smaller websites. If we compare Webflow localization to this, um, I think the main advantage is it is already integrated. You don't need a third party uh, provider. It also has some manual and some automatic translation management. Also, the, obviously the features are not as advanced as on Weglot. Um, you can also localize media. You can also do that the same with uh, um, Weglot. Uh, and you have like a price per local that you are paying and you can also localize meta tags and URLs. So as you can see from the features that you are seeing here, both of them can do or can achieve what you want. It's a little bit more about the process of getting there. Weglot a little bit more automatic, Webflow a little bit more manual, but the manual part also gives you some opportunities uh, to really go deep and customize all of it. Uh, and I think the main difference also is around pricing. So let's take a look right now at the comparison. So first of all, Weglot focuses on automatic translation. That means whenever you implement it on your website, in a couple of minutes, your whole website is translated automatically. 
Second up, it helps you to extend to, or, or like work uh, with uh, ex external collaborators, for example, translation agencies or more people on your team. That's really, really hard to do with Webflow because then you need to invite them to be an editor on your website. Second up, they have a little bit more of a trans uh, advanced translation management. So especially for bigger projects, it's also something uh, that makes it really, really easy. Uh, and they have a quite automated multi-language SEO setup. So they are using all the best practices with hreflang tags and these kind of things and are automatically implementing them on your website. So it's way, way faster to get started. In comparison to that, obviously you don't need a different tool if you're using Webflow native. You have a huge level of customization options um, also, but a lot of manual work is needed and it can also be a little bit more expensive if you are using the Webflow native features because there's no free plan, you are paying per local. So you really need to think about also how your website will grow over time. Um, yeah, and that was basically the difference between Weglot and Webflow. And now I'm jumping in to show you how the setup of Weglot looks like. Okay, so in this example, we want to show you how to actually implement Weglot now on one of our websites. So I picked my personal website here and my goal would be to have the translation from English to German to really, really attract a new level of customers, a new group of customers. And yeah, let's just go through all the steps that are needed to do that. So we are going to start with the Weglot dashboard and in the dashboard itself, we can create a new project. So for me, it's now my website here and I choose the website technology. In my case, that's Webflow. And then we can select the main language of the website right now. So in my case, it's English and we can select the translation, in my case, German. Um, next up, we can select the domain URL. So in my case, maxflight.com. Now we're going to check the domain and we need to decide if we want to work with subdomains or subfolders for the translations. Um, in most cases, subfolders are, or subdirectories are a better idea because it's better for your SEO performance. Um, sometimes subdomains make sense, but I will create another video just on that topic. So in our case, we are going for the subdirectory, meaning um, maxflight.com slash DE in my specific case. Okay, once we click configure now, there's a couple of things that we need to do next. So first of all, we need to uh, connect the DNS settings. And that means we need to go into the domain here, copy the DNS settings. And uh, in my case, I have the domain here in my portfolio. And now I will simply um, add the right text here. Um, and we wanted to add a text. I have the value here and then I will also have the name. Okay, the name would be, whoop, the name in my case would be Ahmed Challenge. So I'm going to copy that over. And what does this do? Basically, this tells the domain, hey, that Weglot is now managing uh, everything that is happening. Um, and as you know, these like DNS updates can take up to 24 hours. In most cases, it's more like two, three, four minutes. Um, but yeah, if you check, click check DNS here, it's totally normal that there's still a red sign in here. So wait a couple of minutes, check it again, and then we will see a new message pop up. Okay, so after I've added the first um, DNS settings or DNS information, now Weglot says they will also want to replace something else. So in this case, the subdomain www as a C name, they want to take it over. So most of the times you will have that set up with your Webflow server so far. But um, yeah, as I said, Webflow uh, is now planning to handle it. This is what it looks before the Webflow proxy. And I'm just going to change that down here so that basically Webflow can take over the domain handling and then do all of the magic that they need to do. Same here, takes a couple of minutes to uh, deploy and then we are good to go. Okay, so that worked very, very well. And now um, the website is almost ready to go. So um, if I click on this right now, it still says there's a DNS error, but it can sometimes take a couple of minutes to deploy everything. And also at the same time, Wakelot is um, translating in the background all of the website. And we will take a look in just a second to see what has happened. Okay, now after a second, as we can see, the setup is finished and I can go to my translations here. 
and we can also should be able to take a look on the real website so if i'm reloading the website now you can see a toggle popping up down here and if i click on that toggle i can quickly change the um, website language and the first very very amazing thing happened as you can see down here everything is translated into the um, language right away so that's very very cool and now we are going to take a look at how we can customize this and adjust some of the settings some of the translations okay now we are going to take a look at what the project settings here in weglog look like i've just opened the the project itself we can click to project and i will show you the most interesting most common features so let's start on the left side with languages for languages you can see that we are translating from english to german and as you know everything till now was automatically translated so now i can go in there here and i see all the translations um, and i can basically adjust all of them so let's imagine i want to change um something that i that is on the on the main page for example i can quickly go in here search for what was happening and maybe we can um, search for something so here i was writing after building my first internet project when i was 13 entrepreneurship had me this is the translation i can easily go in here i could change it uh, however i like it and also adjust the translation save it and then it will take a couple of minutes to be deployed but then on the website i have the new translation so I can literally everything that is automatically translated also adjust manually and you will always see the, the pro, um, percentage of manual translations in here. Second up, URLs. So uh, you can also just do that by looking at the different URLs. So here is the main URL, this is the block URL and you can go uh, in there through that one. Or on the other side, if you prefer to have a visual editor, you can also do that. The visual editor is basically looking like the Webflow interface. You can just go in here and adjust all of the text by um, yeah, browsing the website as if you were uh, someone uh, that is visiting the website. Next up, very important for you, URL slugs. So a URL slugs basically uh, means you can change how the URL is shown. So for example, here the URL is maxlightcom slash blog, but maybe we want to have it a little bit different um, in our German version. So I can add a slug here that says, okay, the original one would be block and the translated one would be tickle um, and now i can add that one and it will also take uh, a minute or so and then will be shown on the website itself i can just take a look if it is already changed uh yeah and as you can see here you can adapt it and this is also very very powerful and helpful for all things seo um next up Trim. you can obviously take a look at the page views that you have here that is relevant just for the pricing that i mentioned earlier uh, then you have the general settings so basically two important things here first of all do you want to have an automatic translation if you want so it is working as i just showed you um, and then the second one would be auto switch so basically if you want to redirect any website visitors based on their browser language so if someone comes in should they be redirected for example to the german version if they have a German uh, browser language. Then next up, you can adapt the language switcher a bit. So you can, uh, for, for example, change the style of it, but also especially or like exactly what is shown and the language switcher is something that is down here. So if you want to adapt that, you can easily do that. Uh, yeah, and that's basically most of the elements that you will have in Weclod. As you can see, it's very, very easy to set up, very easy to use. So in under 10 minutes, I had a translated website. Um, obviously, you need to think a bit about your localization strategy um, and need to adapt it a little bit to your needs, but it's one of the best tools in the market and I can only uh, recommend trying it out. Okay, so now after you've seen how easy it is to implement Weclod, uh, it's finally time to ask the question, so which of the solutions should I use? And my answer to this is it really depends on your goals. If you want to have a solution that is deeply integrated into Webflow, it's probably the best option to use the Webflow native solution. Um, but that means you need to do a lot of manual work um, to get the translations going and also set your website up in the right way. On the other side, you will have Weglot. And Weglot has been around, has been showing since 2016 that they are doing a great job when it comes to translation management. And it's also by far the quicker solution. So 
You can implement it in under five minutes, as I just showed you. It has a lot of automatic features and especially for some of the website, it is also way, way cheaper than using the uh, Webflow native one. And I will just show you real quickly the pricing. So how Webflow prices their localization is basically by um, yeah, charging per local. So you can either have the essential plan that is $12 per month per local. A local will be one language basically. And you have the advanced plan that is 35 bucks per, per month. And at least for our website, it doesn't make sense at all to pick the essential ones. So we are always going for the advanced ones because we need the asset localization. And we also want to have localized URLs, really, really important. So if you do the translation, you should have them and you need the automatic visitor routing. So it can get quite expensive quite quickly. On the other side, you have Weglot and Weglot starts for free. That is really, really cool if your website is a little bit smaller and then it's also very affordable. Um, on the yeah, lower plans here and it's basically scales up with the amount of words that you have on your website. The cool thing here is especially if you have under 50,000 words you can have three translated languages and still only pay $29 per month. So uh, yeah sometimes it makes sense to to get started with Weglot and uh, really really scale with that one and as I said both of the solutions can do the job. Weglot way easier to set up can be cheaper in the beginning. So, so if you want to try it out now for yourself, make sure to use the code MAGICMAX and you will get 50% off on the first year of using Weglot. Also, if you need any help with setting up your system, um, implementing it in your Webflow instance, just reach out to us the, in the descriptions below. And if you have any questions, comments or something, put them in the comments under this video. Otherwise, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.